Hi everyone, this is David Zakos, broker and owner Zakos Realty and Design, and uh, today is a privilege for me to um, have a local elder attorney, probate attorney, uh, introduce in just a minute. I wanted to just share that in my previous profession, which was a deputy detective here in Sarasota County, uh, often dealing with elderly that were taken advantage of, and one reason I got into real estate really is to continue to serve the community, but I just do it in a different way now. Bringing that along, I've got Jay with me today who is an elder attorney and um jay can you just like introduce yourself real quick and tell people a little bit about yourself sure uh, my name is jay foz and i am the uh, principal and 100 percent shareholder of knetsney moore and DeBoer. i actually have offices uh, on the island of venice but i do some collaboration with other attorneys that use their offices in sarasota and osprey i do uh, mostly estate planning trust trust administration probate, and then some corporate work in LLCs that deal with small business owners and uh, their succession plans or sale plans over time. And in the elder law world, there's actually some other categories to that. And those that I don't do, I collaborate with some other attorneys in the area to be able to help people and say Medicaid planning, guardianship issues, and things of the like. So you have a, a lot of different areas you cover. I, I recently referred you to a client because his father had passed away. He came into town trying to get affairs in order and then realized there was no will and had wanted to sell the house. And, and Jay took that call and he was very happy with uh, you helping him. I want to I want to go back a little bit, not talking about necessarily the business, but let's go back and learn a little bit about as an attorney, people feel that you must be really studious, must be uh, somebody that likes school. But <laughs> what's the case with you? Okay, well, we're going to go way back then and understand, yes, I, I am studious, I guess, if you look at. I'm not really attorney as a first career. It's actually a second career for me. My uh, first career was uh, really in engineering. Uh, mechanical engineering was my first degree in specialization in nuclear engineering. Okay. And then a master's in, in engineering and then a master's in engineering finance. And then I eventually went to law school. So I think, I guess, yes, I was studious and I liked going through school. I'll just mention the first three were during the 30 years that I was a uh, Navy officer. I'm a retired Navy submarine captain and a Navy captain. And so that was kind of my first career. And then I went into law as a second career because it actually is something that interests me. I see what I do as solving problems for people it fits very into my engineering background. I looked at problems and I like solutions. So I guess the answer is yes, I like studying and figuring out the solution. And you kind of answered my next question is how you became an attorney. As I understand, you're not just the attorney anymore. You mentioned you're now 100% owner. Being in those two roles, entrepreneur, running a business, attorney, what do you see yourself more as? Well, it's, it's kind of, you know, I can't say it's really split one way or the other. You, When you run a business, you're running a business and you need to keep that healthy and keep the employees happy and moving along and, and you know, serving clients or customers. I have obviously all the professional responsibilities of being the attorney and being the licensed to be able to do what I do. But I think I mentioned back before that I was a, uh, I'm a retired Navy submarine captain. I look at the uh, running of a small business as kind of like running your ship. You know, you have a captain and you have a crew. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that, you know, the crew is trained, they're doing their mission and we're working together to to get it done. And uh, so that's that's kind of where I, I see that. Being your own boss, running your own firm, what's the most rewarding? Being the owner, I think the, the, the big thing to me, like being a captain of a ship again was autonomy. I like being able to make decisions for either good or bad and be able to realize that you're gonna suffer the consequences of a bad decision and suffer hopefully the, the rewards of a good decision. But I also wanna make sure that people understand that when you're a small business owner and you do have employees, you have that crew, you gotta keep them happy and keep them engaged in the things so that they are also making their decisions. But you're still responsible for them when you're the small business owner, but you have to have them making decisions to move things forward otherwise if you're having to make every decision you're not going to have a good business it's not going to get things done would you say that's the most important thing is having that staff that's or what would be the most important thing if you could just point your finger at one thing that makes your company successful well i, I will tell you my staff is what makes my company successful and so i have uh, good employees 
they do a quality job and uh, there's a lot of things that I have you know full faith in, in how they're they're working through problems and that that's what really helps me so that I'm organized that I can concentrate on some of the legal issues and yes occasionally I have to take care of business issues but you know for me to be able to concentrate on you know particular legal problems and whereas my staff is taking care of a lot of the, the work under the scenes it really makes things work well now I have to believe you've been doing this how many years now well it depends on how you look at it I've been involved in uh, the law for over about five years now. okay and and so as I said it's a second career the good thing is is I do have other attorneys and staff that have a mentor who's been doing this for 35 years that actually when we talked about this I bought out this firm and uh, that that attorney has actually stayed on and now kind of works on his own time but is always available to help me and also as I said that I do like collaborating with other attorneys and I recognize when I have a shortfall of uh, when I cannot you know meet someone's needs in a certain area or I think someone else can do that better, I don't hesitate to either refer that person to another attorney or use that other attorney to help me mm -hmm. provide the product to my client. In your role, estate planning, helping people mm -hmm. sometimes, um, there's got to be some rewarding experiences in that. Can you think of one that you want to share? Well, I mean, obviously I can't talk about clients per se, but, you know, in being able to be there to what I deal with, with people, there's, you know, kind of two sets, the living and then the not living. Mm -hmm. You know, living, I'm trying to make people at ease to understand that everything will be taken care of and that, you know, in the end they can sleep well at night knowing it's going to be safely given to they want to give, you know, whatever their things are. On the other side, I have families that come in with a deceased family member. And uh, I have a great you know, sense of responsibility to treat one the wishes of the person who deceased, but also to be caring to the people that are coming in. And it really, I feel good with what I can do to help people and always emphasize that the legal aspects of probate or however you transfer you know, property to another is not something to have as a weight on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. That's the shoulders that I bring to be able to carry to, to help people so that in the end it's not a hard process. Okay, and I feel that from you when you're telling me that. I feel that you have that sense of care and one reason why you know we will recommend you and continue to recommend you. Do you have any long-term goals for your firm? I do. I, I have uh, you know a hope that I'll continue to do this for a long time to come. It was something that I recognized when we were talking about second career paths a little bit that I chose this path. It's something that as long as I keep you know, up with the law, which the bar requires you to continuously study. That goes back to the studious thing. You have, you know, so many hours of uh, continuing legal education you have to do every year that as long as you maintain that and I have that mental acuity, I look for a longer career than what I would have probably had somewhere else. And succession wise, um, my wife and I have five kids and uh, two to three of them I think will end up being you know in the law profession two of them in law school now wow and we're hoping that uh, you know we have our own succession plan and help in the future that's great um, let's change gears a little bit and sure. not talk about your business but just uh, ask you is there something maybe interesting maybe a hobby you do or something people might find interesting about yourself okay so I, I just mentioned I have five kids in blended marriage with my wife and I and uh, we like engaging and dealing with them. They're all over the state of Florida. I'm also a commercial pilot and we I have an aircraft that we were able to on the weekends check in on the kids. Maybe they like it or not, I'm not sure. But uh, you know, we, we are able to, to do a lot of flying. I love flying. I love being on the water as well. It's back to the Navy type of thing. Okay. So those are kind of the interests that we have is uh, to do that. Well, I appreciate your time coming in and sharing and uh, I thank you for watching and we look forward to uh, speaking with you again soon. If you have any questions about this video, please be sure to uh, go ahead and ask and we'll get right back to you. All right, take care.